Hi, it's Professor Cummings, and I want to do another video for you guys. This one is going to be an example problem that's going over you know the concepts that we've been going through uh, in class up to this point of stress and strain. Uh, you know, as you can see, it we've got this image here that we want to look at, and let's go through some of the details. Okay, so you've got this bar, uh, DA, you know, from end to end, point D, point A, that's rigid and is originally held in the horizontal position when the weight W is supported from C. All right. If the weight causes B to displace downward 0 0.025 inches, determine the strain in wires DE and BC. Also, if the wires are made of A36 steel and have a cross-sectional area of 0 0.002 inches squared, determine the weight W. All right, so this is a very basic problem. Again, it's a really basic situation. You've got a bar that's in the horizontal position. It's got a collar at the three foot mark, uh, the external pin, and it's got two guy wires. Uh, at the three foot mark, this is B. The external pin is A. The guy wire is A, or excuse me, B to C, with a weight W on the end, and that's four feet long. You go over to the left two more feet, you get point D, you know, the end of the rigid bar, to the next guy wire, which is D E, and that one's three feet long. So a few things to point out here. You know, we're looking at point B being displaced downward 0 0.025 inches. So this is moving down. Um we got we're going to try and find the thing we're trying to find is the strain in the two wires the two guy wires d e and b c and we also know that the there is a specific material so that means it's going to be specific mechanical properties that apply of a36 to both of the wires and they both have a cross-sectional area of 0 0.002 square inches another point you know, so we can avoid just saying this is an assumption, even though it's not bad just to make a certain logical assumptions, is that the guy wire, or excuse me, that the bar is rigid. So the bar is rigid, meaning that it's not going to bend and bow. We're gonna, not going to assume that any of those things. We're going to assume that it's rigid, uh, even as it's being displaced at B. And of course, you know, we're trying to find the weight W. So we're trying to find the strain in DE. So the strain here, the strain in BC, and the weight W. That should be an epsilon of C, the weight W. So let's go ahead and put the problem, kind of organize it, and start working through this. So again, we got the same image. All right, we're going to follow this given. You know, we've got the B is displaced 0 0.025 inches, an A36 steel wire, two eight six uh, steel wires, uh, the cross-sectional area, again, 0 0.002 square inches, and because it's A36 steel, I looked it up, and we have a Young's modulus of 29 times 10 to the third KSI. All right, so we're going to use some of these basic equations for Young's modulus, stress over strain, and since we're looking for strain, we're going to be able to use this second equation of the displacement or, or deformation over the original length. All right, so now let's put together our, excuse me, what are we going to find? Again, just capture that, you know, the strain in DE, the strain in BC, and the weight. So you can see there's a couple of problems going on here. Uh, and we're going to follow, walk them through step by step. So we'll get to the first way of dealing with most problems, get a free body diagram. We know what the applied load is of W. We also have uh, support reaction loads. Again, this is an external pin. So we have A of X and A of Y, no moment coupling. And again, we've got the tension in wires D, E, and B, C. And we've got the, the key lengths here. And we'll also, since it's a free body diagram, we're going to put in a 
coordinate system just to keep us organized. And this is a pretty simple problem, but still always a good idea to have that here. So again, remember the first thing, let's just uh, tackle the first uh, problem here. Um, there is a weight put on BC. And with this weight on BC, it causes P B, this collar, to displace 0 0.025 uh, uh, inches. So 0 0.025 inches. And if we were to kind of map out what that's going to look like, you can see that the rigid bar goes from here to here, D to, we just call that D prime. And that displacement, if we look down to this mirror image, is 0 0.025 inches. It's also three feet up to between A to B and two feet from B to D. And so what we end up here is two similar triangles or just similar triangles. Uh, these two right triangles, same common angle, and this one leg is 0 0.025, so we know that this leg down at the end, which is how much guy wire DE is going to displace, or deform, is going to move. So we can know there's going to be a proportional relationship between this displacement and this displacement. So we look at that and we can see that this ratio is so 3 feet to 0 0.025 inches is to 5 feet the entire length to whatever that deformation is of DE. You know, and since it is a, you know, similar triangles and proportional relationship, what we can do is cross multiplication, multiply both sides by uh, deformation of DE, multiply both sides by 0 0.025. And then divide by three feet, we end up with the deformation of DE is equal to 0 0.0417 inches. So that's what that proportional leg should do because the bar is rigid. Ready? And again, that is the def deformation of DE. Now, we know what we're looking for. We're looking for the strain of DE. We've got the original length of DE, which is three feet. So that means that we can use this equation and be able to find the strain that we're looking for. Strain of DE is equal to the deformation of DE over its original length. And that comes out to, you know, dividing those two and I'm basically coming, making this conversion to inches of our feet and we end up with a strain of 0 0.0016116 inches per inch. So we've already solved one part of the problem. So now let's regroup a little bit. So we, we solved probably the easiest part of the problem, most straightforward portion of it. So I'm going to put the solutions, what the problem is asking for, you know, highlighted in yellow and keep any of our other calculations uh, unhighlighted. So let's see. So we still have we made a little bit of progress. So let's try and look at this this whole thing and see well what else information can we gather. So if we're going to continue looking at DE, we still have some information we're going to get. Not necessarily because we need it to because of the problem. It's not necessarily a direct solution, but it will lead us to the rest of the problem. And so that means there's some information that we can still put together based on this one guy wire. Okay, so let's take a little bit further clue of that one. So we need to find the force in DE based on the material and the deformation. And the, since the material is A36, we've got Young's modulus for that. And we have a cross-sectional area. And that gives us a couple of equations we're going to get to use, which is Young's modulus is the strain, stress of DE over the strain of DE. Again, we've calculated this and we know this. Once we use that to calculate the stress, we can go to this calculation for stress. We know the area of DE and we've calculated the stress. We can now know what the force is on DE or what the tension in this wire is. So then we can calculate the tension in this wire and then we can start looking at this. This is a very basic statics problem. 
you know, a very, you know, rudimentary strength of materials problem to try and figure out what the other forces are in this whole equation. But this will be the first chance to see what an actual force is in this problem. And also help us also move forward with information for BC. Now that might not directly be available to us. So let's go back to our problem. Again, we got our free body diagram, we got our support reactions, and we have a known force here. We got a known force, or we'll be calculating a force here, excuse me. First, we need to get the stress of DE, and we got the Young's modulus, and we've got strain. So just multiply those two together. Again, this basically factors out. And we end up with 33.56 KSI as the stress in DE. Now that we've got the stress and we've got a, an area that was given to us, we can now calculate the force. Again, stress times the area, inches square inches cancel, and we end up with a force in DE of 67.2 pounds. So there we've got this the force here. And now you can see this problem starts to get a little more jailed. We start to get to a little more of a, a place where we can get closer to a solution. Again, you know, we got these three unknowns, but we can get around that. But we'll go back and regroup a little bit. So here we've got the force. We didn't necessarily need it as far as what would be in request, but we do need it as help us move forward with the problem. So now we're going to be trying to figure out what's going on with this guy wire as well as what's going on with this weight. Like you said, we can look at this entire problem. We've got a whole free body diagram we can work with here. So we're going to have to look at the, the rules of you know static equilibrium. You know, this whole thing is in static equilibrium. So we're going to look at things like sum of forces and sum of moments. Again, the bars in static equilibrium and the sum of forces and sum of moments are going to be equal to zero. There can't be a net force or a net moment or else this thing is accelerating. Um, and this will allow us to use the force equations and find the force in BC. So again, these are the equations we're going to move forward with. So let's move on with that. So again, we got our free body diagram and our coordinate system. So what we'll do is we'll take the sum of the moments about point A that'll eliminate two unknowns. We know the force in DE and that'll help us find out what the tension in this wire BC is. So we'll ultimately wind up understanding what's going on here in that wire. So we'll start off with the sum of the moments about A. We know it's going to equal to zero because it's static equilibrium. We got F of BC, which is going in the clockwise, counterclockwise direction about this point A at three feet minus the force at DE which is going in the clockwise direction. So we have a negative sign and that's at five feet. And so we only have one unknown in this equation. Solve for the unknown, which is force at BC. And we end up with the force or the tension in BC, which is equal to the weight, which is 112 pounds. All right, so now we've got the, you know, starting off in getting one of the other answers to this. Now we just still need to get the strain in wire BC. So let's go back, regroup again. Again, still looking at this wire BC and how are we going to come up with a strain? We've got the force. We've got the strain in DE. So now what can we do to understand what's going on in that, in that wire? Well, again, we've got some key information that's already been given to us. We've calculated what this load has to be, W. We know the material is A36 steel, and we have a diameter in that wire of 0 0.002 square inches. So we can calculate the strain with these two equations. So the strain in BC is equal to the load over the cross-sectional area. In this case, the load is W, and the cross-sectional area is given, 0 0.002 inches. And the strain, based on that, once we know what the stress is, we can use it with the strain equation 
of stress over modular elasticity, which we also already know. So let's go back to our problem. It's a free body diagram, and we will look at what's going on as far as the stress in this wire. Again, we already know the weight W, which is 112 pounds. And you know the cross-sectional area is 0 0.002 inches. Do the math, and that's 56,000 PSI, or 56 KSI. So we've calculated the stress that's in the wire. Now, knowing that this is an A36 wire, and we know that that Young's modulus uh, is based on what was given to us, we can use this next equation, and this will calculate the strain. So that's 56 KSI divided by 29 times 10 to the 6 PSI. And that gives us a strain of 0 0.00193 inches per, cent per inch. So just to kind of summarize everything we know, we solved all the things we were asked for. You know, the strain in, in the wire DE, the strain in wire BC, and we know what the weight W is on this wire. So we use basic concepts we went through in the last couple of videos, static equilibrium, Young's modulus, calculating our strain, as well as calculating our normal stress, and also the use of the free body diagram. So it's Professor Cummings. If there's any questions, go ahead and get, you know leave them in the comment section. Also like the video don't like the video <laughs> share the video to kind of help me out and i will talk to you guys later